All right, third video of the night. Um, I'm just going to talk about this one particular book because this one book is very um, important to me and I could probably talk all night about it. So I don't know what I'm going to say. So I decided to make a separate, entirely separate video on it. So this is my book, my uh, update on this book, uh, Gypsy Divinities and Demons, um, the Magical and Religion. Oh, the magic and religion of gypsies. Um, part ha my hall part two. <laughs> story on how I got it um, when I found out that I had and I've been I've told this story like three times <sighs> so um, when I found out that I had that my Romani heritage was something that I could claim I guess um, back in March or February before my great-grandmother died um, ah! I decided I wanted to incorporate that into my practice because I feel like a lot of the the practices that um, are practiced practices that are practiced a lot of the traditions and things that are practiced within um, the witchy community uh, which within witchcraft Wiccan pagan practices um, are attributed to Romani culture in general for me my spirituality is very family oriented and um, knowledge oriented and cultural oriented so uh, the the family traditions um, of whatever culture that I have are just as important to my spiritual practice as the spiritual practices of those cultures are they kind of go hand in hand to me I believe at some point you probably you guys probably picked up on this at some point um, over the summer, I felt very called to find a, a deity that I really resonate with, that I wanted to sort of make my patron slash patroness and or patroness. Um, I have not done that yet. Uh, I wanted to have, have had it by the end of the summer, but I guess as most of you guys know, spirituality doesn't really have work on a timeline so um, that didn't happen um, and mostly because I wanted to kind of get a handle on all the different pantheons I, I, I uh, the problem is, is that I'm a Libra and I really 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 like options I like choices um, I also hate choices. So the fact that I, um, that my personal ethics as far as my religion goes is very, uh, liberal due to the amount of cultures that I am hereditarily, like, connected to, um, I have a lot of choices because of that. It allows me to choose from a lot of different places. Um... If I were only, like, Irish or whatever, or I only knew about my Irish heritage, I probably wouldn't venture outside of my Irish heritage because, um, I feel, I feel like it's really important, because ancestor worship is something that's very important to me. So I feel like in order to be spiritually connected to all souls, I need to be spiritually connected to the souls that kind of went into creating my soul, I guess you could say. It's all very, ugh. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, and it doesn't really make sense. It's just sort of like an OCD thing of mine. That's just something that's important to me. Like, I would never probably delve into Egyptian pantheon, the Egyptian pantheon, because I don't have uh, any African ancestry or, or, um, Arabic ancestry recent enough obviously we're kind of all from there 
originally if you if you believe in um, evolution but uh, it's not recent enough in my history for me to really claim that um, because the only thing that I can really claim is that before the cultures were created there I my ancestors were monkeys in that region that's really all I can claim so culturally I can't really claim any any connection to them I, it's not recent enough in my hered hereditary history but uh, or there's no proof of it in the last couple thousand re years I, I do have I do have a genealogy chart on my mother's side of the family and she's mostly European but we did find one little nut in there that was not um, we found out that um, or we found that we have a Chinese ancestor which probably was around the times of the um, Crusades over the spice routes to China so that's probably why <laughs> um, but yeah so that's just how I feel about that I can't believe I just talked for six minutes about that um, anyways on to like the point anyways so uh, I went through this whoa ah, sorry I went through this uh, s stage where I really wanted to find or really learn about Romani spirituality and religion and traditions for them like I know I know a lot more than probably the average Joe knows um, just based on my experiences within my own family and then the correlations that I've learned they were because I didn't know that they were Romani traditions until I figured out that like there's a really strong correlation between these things that I grew up with and these things that are pretty prominent in modern day Romani cultures um, so yeah other than that I don't really know that much and I'd really like to kind of give my future descendants um, the the choice to recognize that or ignore it um, so yeah but um, the thing about it is that you can't really do a lot of research on that specifically the religion and like they don't really have like a pantheon that's very well known so um, I started looking for books and stuff on like Amazon I think that the only t thing that I found on the internet about Romani religion um, was only on there for a while and I think it was probably taken down because it wasn't very accurate and so I'm kind of like I kind of, I'm kind of kicking myself for not writing down the names that were written but also kind of patting myself on the back for not doing it because it probably wasn't accurate but whatever so I found this book uh, Gypsy Demons and Divinities The Magic and Religion of the Gypsies by Elwood B. Trigg this cop this uh, I just looked at the copyright and it came from like 1973 so it's a very old book and probably not entirely accurate if you look at it it's very well loved I think this is the first edition I don't know for a fact but I'm pretty sure it's a first edi edition and um, I did a, a, did a lot of research on it and the reviews and stuff said that like, this is super interesting. Um, a lot of writers are using this book um, to sort of have like a, something that's sort of given like academic credence to or credit to because um, they want it to, they want their writing about Romanis to be accurate. They don't want it to be like, the like mystical idea of what Romanis are so um, yeah so but a lot of this stuff a lot of people said like I don't know how, how accurate it is because it's not written by a Romani she she outright says that she is a Gorgio um, those that's the word that she called it although I've heard it called Gaji Gajo uh, Gorger and um, think that's it but like there it's apparently an offshoot of this of probably Gajo 
I think that that was the original word. There's probably an original, original word that that was. But it basically means non-Romani. Um, so she's not Romani. So she doesn't really know this from personal experience, just from what people have written. So she's done the digging for us and presented it um, in this nifty little book. And it's very, very, very interesting. So I don't know how much of this is accurate, but I will say that she gives a lot of different, um, uh, she doesn't just say this is how it is. This is the one and only way that it is. So it's, it, I'm more likely to give it, to give it credence because she gives a lot, she says like, this is pretty, uh, prevalent in this particular society, this particular branch of, um, gypsies but not in this other one so i'm more likely to to kind of uh give her the benefit of the doubt that, that a lot of this is probably pretty accurate um and and again she also doesn't say this is absolutely how it is she says according to these sources this is something that i've heard so again those sources could be wrong however there are multiple sources on it, so maybe not. Um, but it's pretty interesting. It's got like a lot of stuff. It's um, has like the history uh, of like when they suddenly appeared in Europe, um, uh, ideas of where they might have come from, um, and then that's chapter two. And then chapter three is an introduction to gypsy magic and religion. Uh, chapter four, they talk about witches, the evil eye, curses, medical cures, charms, love filters, um, and fortune telling. Chapter five, taboos against women, sexual taboos, food taboos, and theft taboos. Um, chapter six, baptism, marriage, divorce, blood, brotherhood, and coronation. coronation. Uh, omens of death, death bird, prophecies of death, death vigils, corpses, death taboos, property destruction, and burials. Uh, funerals, mourning, grave decoration, fear of grave robbers, disposal of properties, and mourning taboos. The afterlife, the cemetery cult, vampires, werewolves, and other creatures, sex and vampires, and destruction of vampires. Apparently vampires are a very, according to this woman, are a very prevalent um, aspect, or were, of a very prevalent aspect of Romani uh, life. Uh, so ghosts, fairies, devils, worship of vampire gods, blood sacrifice, the worship of the goddess Bibi, the child strangler, uh, animal and tool worship, the worship of mountains, sun worship, fire worship, worship the worship of Alako, the moon god, the worship of Kar, the phallic god, Farun, Del, major world religions, Christianity, and conclusion. Now, from what little I have read this much right here, um, I can... I'm actually a little inclined to believe that, that gypsies did originate in Egypt and traveled to India. I think that they actually started in Egypt. It's not a very popular opinion, but according, like, to, just based on, like, the etymology of um, some of the words that they use, they're very, I've heard very similar words in, and I'm not, like, an expert or whatever, but I've heard very similar words in, um, Egyptian texts or or like what little Egyptian I've been exposed to not very much so don't like quote me on it but I am inclined to believe that they they do in the introduction they talked about she talked about um, the many different ideas of where they may have come from she mentions India she also mentions Egypt as if it was actually considered like um, as an accurate possible origin place of Romanis. So, um, who knows? We, we will probably never know. I don't think Romanis even know because they only pass things off onto each other verbally. They don't really know where they come from. What they do know is that their language um, is very, very similar to uh, Hindi. I don't know if that really means much because if they went from Egypt through India and they stayed there for a long while, which is what I think happened, I think that they originated in Egypt. Um, so their mystical ideas of everything 
has a base of Egyptian and then they like wherever they go they just sort of added everything else on so that's what I personally think happened because I know for a fact that even just even like travelers within this life like people not travelers like travelers gypsy travelers or or Irish travelers people who travel a lot people who are natural nomads in their hearts they sort of pick up customs from other places and use those customs within their everyday life and they they change so much that even the way that they speak their accent changes so I mean if that could just take place with one person traveling as much as we can in this day and age um, over several thousands of years it makes sense that it, it could have taken place that way so um, another like one of my the main reasons why I believe that is um, I think at one point and again don't call me on this I'm not reading this like right now but I believe that I read in this book that went during like the introduction in the history or whatever she she calls the head of the original tribe the Faroon which sounds suspiciously like the word Pharaoh so that could be a thing but yeah so I'm really excited about this book I've kind of been reading it in little bits and pieces and I haven't really been taking notes I probably should be taking notes but I think I'm going to finish this book before I start on any other projects. So, uh, I need to, like, organize my stuff. I think I'll do that someday. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you, uh, this is a pretty, apparently a pretty rare book. Uh, it was, I only saw, like, three listings for it on Amazon, and they were all by secondhand sellers. So, they only had, like, the one thing. So, if you want it... You should probably jump on it. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching. If you want that, like, you can go find it on Amazon. I'll probably post that in the description box below. All right, sorry. I'll stop talking. I'll stop rambling. I love you guys. Bye.